In Daniel chapter 11, he talks about all these different kings, that will, kingdoms that will come up, including Alexander the Great. Well, what happens, there's a guy, there was a guy named um, Antipas Epices. And what, and what he did, he was, a, he was this um, Gentile ruler, and he takes over Jerusalem. He comes into the temple, and he sets up a statue of Zeus. And not only does he set up a statue of Zeus, but he ends up taking a bunch of pigs, boiling them, and spraying the whole temple down with pig water. Now you go, oh my gosh, what does that do to the Jews? And so there's books that are written that are not in our Bible, and they're, and two of the books is called Maccabees. But if you ever get a chance to read it, it's the Maccabean Revolt. And what happens is the Jews get alarmed, and they go, okay, this is enough. And so... Some people see that as a like a pre picture of what this desolation is going to happen during this last seven weeks. That didn't happen. That wasn't the last seven weeks. Anticipes was not the Antichrist, okay? Because the Antichrist was of the people, and 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 and, and so this guy was different. But he was like a picture of what to come. So. What this Antichrist is going to do during this period of time, he's going to be a friend to the Jews. And Tispus was not a friend to the Jews at all, anywhere. Okay? But he set up his little statue, and that's kind of a mere image of what's going to happen here. And that was in 167 B.C. And when that happened. So verse 16. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains. Okay? So now, you know, he's already talked to disciples. He said, you're going to face tribulation. So then, now in this section, he's already told them what, what things are starting to come. He's almost now talking to the Jews because, yes, it is to the Jews because you'll see the words here. To those who are in Judea, who are Jews, must now flee to the mountains. Whoever's on the housetop must not go down to get their things out of his house. Whoever's in the field must not turn back to get his cloak. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. But pray that your flight will not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. So you can see, using the word Sabbath, that he's speaking to Jews, okay? A large people, you know, depending on where you believe here or you believe here, once the Christians are taken out of this period of time, it's mainly Jews and Gentiles that will eventually become believers that are living during this period of time. Because they didn't get raptured. It was just the believers that were, that were raptured. And so what happens is he's saying, hey, look, you know, woe to you because there's going to be a lot of troubles coming on. And pray that it's not going to happen during the Sabbath because, you know, to the Jews, you don't do any work during the Sabbath. And so he continues on. Verse 21, for then there will be a great tribulation. Okay, this is different than the tribulation that he's already mentioned earlier that, hey, you're going to face tribulation. You're going to face oppression. But now there's going to be this great oppression. Again, if you get a chance to study Revelation more, you'll find out that there was seven seals, seven trumpets, and then seven bowls. The seven bowls bring out a tremendous amount of wrath. It is truly the wrath. I mean, it is an unbearable time, a period of time. And not only does it destroy the government, but as you, as, you, as you continue to read in Revelation, you'll find out that it destroys the economic and it destroys the false religion, okay? And both of them are called the, the, the woman of Babylon and the Babylon of the economics are all falling to pieces. I mean, it's just a terrible destruction time because what happens is this Antichrist comes in and he says, oh, by the way, he's got the whole world now in his, in his hands. He says, if you want to buy or eat or do whatever you want, you got to put a mark on your hand or on your forehead. And it says, let the reader be wary. This The number is 666. The number of man. So, in those days, unless those days have been cut short, verse 22, no life would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. So, why is it seven years? Because when this final wrap, I mean, the, the first half of the tribulation period of time is famine, wars, um, earthquakes. And, and, and you'll see, and, and, and we've already seen in here, he said these are all signs. You know, more and more, we're starting to see more and more earthquakes. We're starting to see more famine. COVID, without a shadow of doubt, in my mind, is just another one of these little birth pains 
Because now we've seen not only in America, but we've seen the whole world basically control people and say what you can and can't do in every country. COVID is still running wide open. I don't know if you heard the news or not. India has had an enormous amount of ca cases than they've ever had before. America is starting to, the, the decline is starting to go, but still, I don't know where the end of this is coming at is with this COVID stuff. But still, it's not something to be feared. Any more than what we're reading here is something to be feared. It's not to be feared. Because as believers, we know who's on the throne. As believers, we know what's going to happen. He's given us this information. Again, not to entertain us, but to encourage us and to encourage each other. So he goes on, verse 23. If then, if anyone says to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or there he is, don't believe him. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and will show great signs and wonders and so to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Okay, so let's just stop right there. Again, there's been, Satan is an angel. Okay, so let's kind of understand what's going on. There's first, the, in, the, in the Revelation, they call him the dragon also. So there's the dragon, there's the Antichrist, and then there's this guy named the false prophet. Okay, the Antichrist sets up a, tra a, a, a temple, I mean, a, a statue of himself inside the holy temple, okay, and says, you're going to worship me. So they create this image, and then the false prophet ends up getting all the people and says, you need to do this, you need to do this. It's almost like an unholy trinity, because here you have the devil, the dragon being God, you have this Antichrist who comes to appear to look like a false messiah, and then you have this false prophet that's doing basically the role of the Holy Spirit. And so there's all these, all three of these forces coming together. Now when you read after the Battle of Armageddon, it says that the false prophet and the Antichrist are cast immediately into the lake of fire. That's the final destination. That's the final destination of death. That's the final destination of hell. That's the final destination. They don't even go to hell. They don't even go to you know, hell. They go straight to the lake of fire. Satan, <laughs> on the other hand, is taken and is chained up and put into a prison, into a pit for a thousand years. And during that thousand years, Christ is going to rule on earth. But then there's an interesting little section that's only short. It says, then Satan's going to be released. And then all of a sudden, he's going to convince people at the end of that thousand years that, hey, Let's not believe in Jesus anymore. And it's kind of hard to believe that people who would live a thousand years under Christ's rule still wouldn't recognize who Christ is. But that's human nature. And what's going to happen is he's going to grab those people and they're going to have a battle and bam, it's over with. There's not even a big battle like it talks about Armageddon. It's just bam. And then the earth and the heavens are passed away and God sets up a new earth and a new heaven and there's a white throne judgment. And all those who have died and didn't raise with Christ are going to be standing before the white throne judgment. If their name is not written in the book of life, you know, he's going to open up books. And then he's going to open up the book of life. And if your name's not written in the book of life, your, your judgment is the same place that the, um, and, that the Antichrist and the beast were immediately thrown into. So Jesus says, Behold, I've told you this in advance. Okay? So they're asking for a sign. And so he says, Okay. You asked for it. I'm telling you. And Jesus wanted to tell them. I mean, it's not like God's hiding this way. Again, there's certain there's secret things that God holds on to. Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians and in, 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 first, in first Thessalonians, he says, I'm going to tell you a mystery. That's a, that's a secret of God that was never told in the Old Testament that talks about the rapture. He says, I want to tell you something. We're all not going to die. There's going to be those who are already dead in Christ, and they're going to rise first, and they're going to meet Christ in the, in, in the air. But then those who are alive during that tribulate, during that rapture, whenever it happens, that, that rapture, then those who are alive are going to be snatched up with the believers who have already passed away and be with Christ forever. And we see in Scripture that there's two judgments. There's a judgment of the believers. You don't lose your salvation. But as Paul writes in Corinthians, you're going to go through, and depending on what you did with the gift of gifts and the gift of salvation that God's given to you, what did you do with it? And some of us hadn't done much of anything, so it's almost like wood and stubble. It's going to burn up. 
You're still going to be saved because it's what Christ did for you. It's not what you did. But then the other, there's going to be others who have done good things with the gifts that God's going to give. And he's going to reward them for the things that they did. And so, you know, we're all going to be in heaven. That judgment of, 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 of Christ is not whether or not you're going to heaven or not. That judgment is depending upon what type of reward you're going to get. But for but the great white throne judgment, that's a totally different picture. And we'll talk more about that in chapter 25 later on. So, then um, verse 26. So if they, if they say to you, behold, he's going to do this again. He's in the wilderness. Do not go out. Or behold, he's in a, in a room. Do not believe them. For just as lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will be the Son of Man. So he's basically telling, okay, there's not a timeline, folks. Don't go chasing after rumors, okay? How do we know when Jesus is going to come? Hey, all these things that we talk about, the tribulation, the great tribulation, the antichrist, all those things are going to happen before he shows up. So he continues on. He says here, um, whenever the um, corpse is, there will be vultures too. Now, kind of give you a picture, and I didn't want to go into this much, but I want to just dive into a little bit. Turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 19. So I want you to kind of see how he gives us a snippet of what chapter 19 is actually talking about. So we're going to look at Revelation chapter 19. We're going to start with verse 11. And I saw in heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he, capital H-E, who sat on was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and wages wars. His eyes were a flame of fire, his head many denims or crowns, and he has a name written on that no one that no one knows except for himself. He was clothed in a robe, dripped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. Remember John chapter 1, verse 1? In the beginning was what? The Word. The word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then verse 14, that word became flesh. So you know, John's right, and I love this because now John is writing this, and you gotta imagine John was a teenager when he was a disciple of Christ. Now he's around 80 or 90 years of age. He's gone through a lot of persecution. Most of his other dis disciple friends who were with Jesus have all passed away and been and probably been martyred. He's been he's been mistreated, but he hasn't died. In fact, there's no recording of, of John ever dying as a martyr. He probably eventually did die of a natural death, but John is God gives John this vision, and so he says, in, in the name of uh, name of, in the name on him was with the word of God, and the armies which were in heaven, clothed in white linens, white white and clean, were following him on white horses. Okay, guess who that is? And us, and from and from his mouth came what a sharp sword. What's the sharp sword? Ephesians. What what weapon do we have? The word of God, his word. So out of his mouth comes a sharp sword so that he may strike down the nations and he will rule them with an iron rod. He will tread the winepress of the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh was the name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And then I saw an angel standing in the sun. He cried out in a loud voice and he said, get this, here it is. Say to the birds which fly in the mid heavens, come and a symbol for the great supper of the Lord God. Here's what we said. What he said in verse 28, Matthew, he says, whenever there's a corpse, there is vultures that will gather. So this is that battle. This is that battle of Armageddon that's coming up. And there's going to be many corpses. There's going to be many deaths during this period of time. The enemies of God. And I saw, uh, and so, and so, verse 18. And so that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of commanders and the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of of horses and those who sit on them, the flesh of both men, free and slave, free and slaves, great and small. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies assembled to make war against him who sat on a horse and against his army. Verse 20, and the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet who performed many signs. Okay, remember what Jesus was saying? Watch out, there's gonna be a lot of signs. Satan's gonna be allowed to give power and to and to do signs. That looks like the signs of Elijah, the signs of Moses, the, sign, the, the healings of, of, of Jesus, even the healings that the um, the signs that um, 
follow the disciples during the book of Acts. He says they're going to be, you know, both these guys who have done these, done these things, he's going, to, he's going to take them 